Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So I've gotten a lot of requests to take a look at this program. We're looking at AutoBleam today. The newest version is 0.5.1. It was released about 10 days ago and we have Screamer to thank for this. My first impression of AutoBleam is really positive. I think they did a lot of good things with this. And the fact that it was created with a very small team of no more than I think two people is actually pretty impressive. So let's get started. First thing you have to do is prepare your flash drive. Your flash drive will have to be formatted to FAT32 and labeled as Sony. To do that, just right click your drive and hit format. This box right here will pop up. Just make sure that file system FAT32 is selected and have the volume label named Sony, all capital letters. Make sure quick format is checked, then hit start. You should get a pop-up saying that the format has been completed. Next, you have to decide on which version of AutoBleam you want. So the clean version comes with no box art. The full version comes with box art for all three regions, Japanese, US, and European. And then the J, U, and E represent the box art that you get for the Japanese, US, and Europeans respectively. You can also download the covers database files separately. So I selected the US version. When we open this up, we're greeted with folders that are reminiscent of Retroboot and Blame Sync. So AutoBleam makes it very easy to select what themes you want. They made a themes folder right here. And then from here, you just add your themes folder as long as it's in the correct format and it'll be added to the list. And I'll touch on that later. AutoBleam does have RetroArch support, but as you can see, it doesn't come with the files. All you have to do is take your RetroArch folder that you got either with Blame Sync or Retroboot and then just paste it to the root of your USB with these other folders. It should just be a RetroArch folder with all the subdirectories. Then you have your games folder where your games will go. To add your games, you have to put them in a folder. So minus the memory cards and save states folder, it should look something like this. Your games will be inside a folder and in that folder, you'll have your bin and queue files or your PVP files. AutoBleam does support PVP files. You won't have the box art, the INI or the config files. Those are created automatically. You just need your game files in here. So we're only gonna take a look at a few games here. And I threw Thrill Kill in there to see if AutoBleam will pick up the box art for that game. That was an unreleased game that you couldn't really find in stores. So once you have your games where they're supposed to be, all you have to do is copy all these files and put them on the root of your USB drive. And that's all you have to do. There's no programs to run or anything like that. You just insert this into your PlayStation Classic and then AutoBleam will run automatically. So this next part is where this program really stands out. So we're gonna to go to the PlayStation Classic and take a look. So when you first start up AutoBleam, you'll be prompted to scan your directory by hitting X. And after you do that, you're greeted with this main menu. And this is what is the most impressive thing in my opinion about this program that the other ones haven't done yet. This menu is extremely detailed and has a ton of options. So if we look at the bottom, if you hit the start button, it'll take you right into AutoBleam, which is the games that you added yourself. The X button will rescan your games on your flash drive in case there was an error or something like that. Hitting circle will take you to the original 20 games. As of right now, they haven't been able to mix the games together, but I know they are working on that. If you added the RetroArch folder to your flash drive, hitting square will open up the RetroArch menu. Hitting the triangle button will take you to an about page. I'll hit that right now. It gives you the version number, who's responsible for the themes, and the members of the team. It gives you a link to their GitHub and lets you know that they have a Discord channel. The select button brings up an options menu and the L1 will bring up an advanced options menu. So let's hit select real quick. So our first option is a language selection. We have, I think, five or six to choose from. Very nice. I think my favorite spelling of the word configuration comes from this right here, very Mortal Kombat. You can change your auto bleam theme, which is the screen we're looking at right here with this menu, pushing left and right. You can see here, it'll change not only the background, but the menu music that is played on the screen. I'll keep this one on the original for now. This next option for the menu theme is what you see on the games menu with the carousel. Next option is PC SX version. You have a choice between Blame Sync and Original. I'm not 100% sure on what the differences are. I know um, the Blame Sync version has something to do with saves. It corrected something, so I would just keep it on the Blame Sync version. You have a quick boot option. When enabled, it'll skip this menu altogether. If you have this selected and you want to change back to where you get back to this menu upon startup, you just hold the circle button during the boot up It'll override that option and you can go back into the menu where you can disable it again if you want to. The background music option, when turned off, turns off the background music. The GFX filter adds something like a bilinear filter to the games to kind of smooth out 
the uh, 2D sprites or something like that. And then these last two options of show RetroArch and advanced. If we disable those and we go back to the main menu, we no longer have the RetroArch and advanced menu options. Since I didn't put RetroArch on here, I will leave that option disabled, but I will enable the advanced option so we can go over those. So by holding the L1 button, we have two more options here. We have memory cards and game manager. If we go into the memory cards option, this is where you can create a custom memory card. You see, I've already created one. I just labeled it A. We'll go over why this option is pretty neat. So we're gonna go back into our advanced again, game manager. And here you can see all the games that we added. You'll see at the top, it shows you the free space that you have on your flash drive. I thought that was a really nice addition. But basically what you're doing on this screen is what you would have done on your flash drive with changing the game title or the number of players and things like that. You do all that on the system itself now. It's really nice. So if you hit X on say Castlevania Chronicles, you can hit X to rename the game if you want. And then we can take a look at these other options. The select button will lock the game. If you change any information like the game name or the box art, when you lock the data, if you go to scrape the information again upon adding a new game or something like that, it'll keep whatever you saved on here and it won't change it. The start button will activate the high resolution or low resolution modes. So then you have change memory card and share memory card. If we hit square, you can select that custom memory card that we selected. Why that's useful is for games such as like Resident Evil 2, where you have Leon A and B and Claire A and B games. When you share that custom memory card between the two games, that's how you do those extra game modes. And then again, something like Metal Gear Solid, when you have like the Psycho Mantis fight, you know, he'll scan your memory card for other Konami games. If you share all those game saves on one card, you get that little extra scene in there. So that's what this is for, to share memory cards between games. And I thought this was an extremely thoughtful option to put in here. So overall, I think this menu is wonderful. I think this is what really makes AutoBleam stand out. I, these options and the amount of options is just very, very impressive. So let's hit start. We're going to start up AutoBleam, go to those games that we added. All right, so you can see here the Tenku uh, theme loaded just fine. And like I mentioned before, if you want to add more themes, just throw them in that folder onto your flash drive. They'll be added to that list. So we just have a few games on here, Castlevania Chronicles. Let's open a couple of them up real quick. Let's start with Twisted Metal 2. So this is definitely a game that should have been on the console to begin with. And we all know it wasn't. That's okay. They gave us the first one, which isn't a bad game at all. But this one just adds so much more. You see here... Everything sounds pretty good and everything looks nice. I'm gonna blow up this generator thing. All right, I got a lightning. Oh, I don't get lightning anymore. Oh, I got missiles instead. That's okay. The game looks really nice and it's playing fine. Soundtrack is playing really good. I got frozen. Please don't do it. He's gonna do it. Maybe he won't do it. I got lucky there. All right, here, have a boomerang for your trouble. Now from in the game, oh, he's gonna do it this time. Here we go, yep. That's okay. So from in the game, you can hold select and hit triangle to get to the emulator menu that we all know. From here, you can exit the game, go right back to your games menu. And just like before, you'll be prompted if you want to overwrite your suspend point. We will leave that alone. I do want to show one more thing. I want to see how that high resolution option looks with Jet Moto. So I'm going to do a quick before and after. Hey guys, editing Patton here real quick. I just want to touch on a couple of things I didn't get to during the recording of this video. As you can see here, the Thrill Kill box art did scrape properly. It is right here. It looks very nice. And the other thing is you cannot return to that main AutoBleam menu without turning off your system. They are working on trying to get that available, but as of right now, the only way to return to the main menu is to restart your system. So there you go, that's AutoBleam uh, 0.5.1, the newest version just released, like I said before, 10 days ago. Only two people working on this, and this is really amazing. I think they've done a great job with this. I'm very impressed. I'll make sure and leave links in my description where you can find their GitHub or their Discord or anything related to this program. So I hope this video was useful. I want to thank everybody so much for watching, and I will see you next time.